deals in town. It's tax time, so when that refund comes in, it's the perfect time to get the furniture you've always wanted. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. Come on in to Davis Appliance and Furniture, where you can find the best deals in town. It's tax time, so when that refund comes in, it's the perfect time to get the furniture you've always wanted. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. From the station that's on your side, News 12, First at Four continues. Good afternoon. The community mourning the loss of a 20-year-old woman shot and killed at Hepzibah. Now, her friends are setting up memorials to honor her. Where the case stands now, coming up. And it's day six of the search for two best friends who went under at Clark Hill Lake and never resurfaced. Boaters, divers, and even helicopters try to help bring their families closure. The first up today, a viral video shows an Aiken man punching a teenager in the face. Now, there's an investigation and people are taking notice. Today, we're learning more that, about the older man in that video. He is facing third-degree assault and battery charges and breach of peace. Our Celeste Springer went to find out more about exactly what happened, and as she tells us, there's still a lot more questions than answers. It all started here at the Circle K off Whiskey Road. Aiken Public Safety responded to a call here at 7.30 last night in response to a teenager being punched in the face. But one mom of a witness to that tells me that she thinks it was all over what type of truck that teenager was driving. According to the incident report, police believe the fight you see here was, quote, mutual combat. Aiken Public Safety tells me their officers made that conclusion after watching surveillance video from the Circle K. They were not able to tell us what specifically made them believe both people were combative. The 18-year-old in the video did not press charges last night, but public safety tells us he came back this morning after changing his mind. A manager with the Circle K tells me this is a pretty popular hangout spot for a lot of teenagers in town. A parent of one of those teenagers here says she believes this all started over what they were driving. She says the man you see in this video insulted the teenager's truck. It's like a daily thing for anybody that drives a squatted truck. They get harassed by grown men. So I guess my whole point is, like, we just really need for the grown men to keep their, their opinions to themselves. Like, let the kids have fun with their trucks. It doesn't matter if they like them or not. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll hear more from that parent about what she believes led up to that video. We'll also have an update from Aiken Public Safety about where their investigation goes from here. And Aiken, Celeste Springer, on your side. Thanks, Celeste. As of right now, officials tell us there are no charges against the 18-year-old in that video. We have much more news ahead. Every month's tips at 6 o'clock will be near 80. 8 p.m. will be down into the low 70s. So a very nice evening up ahead. And the weekend's looking good, too. We'll have a look at that in just a little bit. Riley, thanks very much. Friends and family grieving the loss of this 20-year-old Brinley Kitchens. They set up a memorial where she went to high school over at Lakeside. She died yesterday evening after Richmond County deputies say her ex-boyfriend shot her in the face. It happened Wednesday on Entry Road in Hepzibah. She was taken to a hospital in critical condition until she lost her life last night. Deputies say that man is 20-year-old Jaden Ross. He now faces an additional charge of murder. He was already charged with aggravated assaults. It's been six days now since authorities started searching for Edward Kirk Jr. and Ian Wilson. Today, officials are using every resource they can, putting a helicopter over Clark's Hill Lake. We're told crews will continue that search into, into the weekend. There's a candlelight service set for the two this Sunday night, 6 o'clock. That's going to be at Meadowbrook Park. We'll take a look at this. This is how Richmond County deputies found one of the entrances of J.C. Penney of the Augusta Mall this morning. You can see glass shattered, scattered everywhere, and deputies say a suspect stole an unknown amount of jewelry from the J.C. Penney store around 4 o'clock this morning. They're still looking for that suspect. Investigators in Aiken are releasing new photos of two robbery suspects. They are wanted in connection with several armed robberies at both Dunkin' Donuts in Aiken, a subway on Pine Log Road, and the Palm Beach Tan Shop on Silver Bluff. Authorities say both suspects are between the ages of 40 to 60 and were driving a silver Chevy sedan, possibly a Malibu or Impala. A little more than a dozen workers from the Augusta Richmond County landfill went on strike. They say they've been patient, waiting for changes, but this was the next step. According to a list of demands they gave us, they're wanting higher pay, new equipment, and new management. We've reached out to the city administrator for his response to the issue. We're still waiting to hear back. 
Columbia County Sheriff's Office needs your help identifying this man. This is the only picture deputies were able to get, which doesn't even show his full face, but they say he's been using counterfeit $20 bills to buy things on Facebook Marketplace. If you have any information on who he is or where he might be, call the Columbia County Sheriff's Office. Three Savannah police officers are on leave after a gif mocking a black man hanging was allegedly shared in a group text message. It's blurred on your screen, but text messages show it was sent out on April 7th, just days after William Harvey allegedly hung himself with his shoelaces in a Savannah police interrogation room. The GBI is still looking into the case, while the family is still waiting for a video from the interrogation room. Their attorneys say the behavior is unacceptable. It is deeply disturbing that Savannah Police Department, who are charged with protecting and, and serving all Savannah citizens, would have such callous disregard for the life of a man who was in their custody. Attorneys for the family say they will ask the Attorney General to get involved if they don't get that video. Well, since February of 2020, police officers just up the road in Columbia have collected more than 450 pictures of illegal gun seizures. It's all part of some new steps to curb gun violence, and they also have an interactive map showing when and where the guns were seized. Shot Spotter is another tool they're using. It uses hundreds of acoustic sensors to listen for gunshots. Police get an alert within 45 seconds. The police chief says these are much needed changes. We cannot continue to do things how we had already, always done it. Um, that's the definition of insanity. As an agency, our focus has been very um, surgically focused on gun crime. And that's from, that's not just the specialized units, that's from the patrol units on the street. In the Columbia area, gunshot victims are down 19% since 2015, but fatal shootings have gone up 70% over that same time. Since the start of the pandemic, VHAC officials have been doing food safety inspections virtually. And it's not just restaurants, it's also for the cafeterias and your kids' schools. Health officials say the inspections are still highly effective. Critics say it gives people the opportunity to hide what they don't want you to see. I had a restaurant, and I didn't want you to see one of my ice boxes. You wouldn't see it. You'd see the one that's cleaned up. So, obviously, it's better to be there. But Zoom and uh, virtual is better than having no inspection. You know, if virtual and, and that inspector is not there in person, they certainly can still get a really good glimpse of exactly what are the safety precautions going on in that restaurant. Some areas of the state have been able to return to in-person inspection, but places where they can't social distance there are still inspecting virtually. Well, tomorrow is a big day for the James Brown block party in Augusta. Find the mural and the music on James Brown Boulevard and you will find a party. On top of all the fun, there's going to be free live art demos as well. And you'll get the chance to see the screening of the making of the James Brown mural as well. The party kicking off at 2 o'clock and wraps up at 8 in the evening. A woman is shocked after she finds her screen patio with a giant hole there. It wasn't until she caught a frequent friend splashing in the pool that she realized who it was. We'll explain next. And Dad, download it today. Can you imagine a bear coming to take a dip in your backyard swimming pool? Well, for one Florida woman, it happens all the time. And this isn't just a story she's telling. She's got pictures to prove it. Megan Meyer shows us more. Karen Buckrath waking up one morning to find this large oh, hole in her screen. And he's very good about it. I would see um, the, the pool deck would be all wet at this end. She knew something was sneaking in. A certain bear that liked to hang out in her backyard came to mind. I kind of figured it was the bear, but I couldn't really catch him. And then she caught the bear in action. He's very sneaky. I mean, I don't see him unless I hear the water moving or I see a ripple across it. She heard splashing coming outside to find him inside her pool. There's a little ledge over there that he sits on. And now it's happening quite often. But he uses, always uses the same entrance. The entrance he created himself. This is the first destruction he's really done. Bachrath says she always snaps pictures of the furry animals to send to her nephew. So I start sending him pictures of my bear, and he thinks that the bear's my pet. The six-year-old even prints out the pictures and takes them to school. He takes them to show and tell and tells everybody, this is my grandma's pet bear. <laughs> She's seen bears around her neighborhood in Golden Gate Estates for years. It never, it didn't bother me when he was out here. But now, if I'm outside cleaning the lanai and I've got music playing, 
he'll come running around, and I don't know where he comes from, but all of a sudden there he is. Things are getting a little too close for comfort. But now that he's coming into the pool, yeah, it does kind of make me a little nervous at times. Well, yeah, I guess the strategy here is leave the screen door open and just let the bear come and go as he pleases. I mean, wow. I know, that bear needs to start paying rent because <laughs> the way he's acting. Back to the pool. So it's got the garbage can here and the pool there. It is bear paradise. There right? you go. Can that's you a imagine? big bear, too. It's a large it's bear. It's a tiny little cub. That's a, that's a decent sized bear. I didn't realize Florida was famous for big black bears, but there yeah. you go. Yeah, they got them for they sure. They got them. Good stuff. Um, weatherwise, nothing. And continuing that trend through Wednesday. Riley, thanks a lot. We've been mentioning that traffic, and now we can confirm with these live pictures a crash with injuries right on the I-20 bridge at the state line. Right now, we're flying our drone over I-20. You can see that traffic moving extremely uh, slow as it's backed up, and we take a look around there. That's Top Golf there off in the distance as you look toward the Savannah River there, and you can see I-20 eastbound just creeping along. We've reached out to officials for an update on the condition of those drivers. We're going to let you know as soon as we learn more, but it's I-20 eastbound, very slow going this afternoon during a busy time of day not too far from our television station at Riverwatch and I-20. Okay, moving on now. A Myrtle Beach man says there's been a hole in his heart for 57 years. He says it's been there since the son he only held twice was given up for adoption. Now, after all that time, the two are reunited. They have a lot of catching up to do, and Jim McCleary shows us their fateful reunion. I was 18, she was 16 when he was born, and the parents were in charge. They, they wanted adoption, they moved out of town. That was the last Richard McCleary knew of his son, until online DNA test results showed a 100% match. The father-son relationship. And led to this heartfelt reunion of father and son. How are you? Yeah. 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 For the past week, they've been soaking up the time together and soaking up the sun, with this son soaking up information he's wondered about for years. It's quite a family history. I have a lot of research to do. I have a lot of homework. He's giving me homework. In seven days, they make up for 57 years. I went down to Georgetown yesterday. We've eaten a lot. We've yeah, <laughs> gone to many restaurants. Yep. <laughs> That's when the father and son realize they share some similar traits. We order the same food at the same time. Definitely same taste buds. Yeah. Same allergies. We're both uh, choking and coughing on Paula. Yeah. yeah. So you know where that started. Bye. On this last day, Jim and his family are in town. They'll share another meal together and share the rest of their lives together as father and son. In Orme County, I'm Amanda Kinsett. A great bond between father and son. It's great to see them back together after all these years. Well, uh, an important night in North Augusta. Sharon Jones getting her flowers uh, from the Augusta community. Tonight she's going to be honored at the Sharon Jones Amphitheater. The, share, the ceremony was rescheduled because of bad weather earlier, but after this dedication ceremony, the, ser the amphitheater named for her, there's going to be a concert full of Sharon Jones, the Dap King Classics. That's a sellout event, but we're going to be live on the scene for you here on News 12 at 6 o'clock. The Sharon Jones Amphitheater being dedicated tonight in her honor. Well, they've been teaching local kids to play instruments for more than four decades now, and they're hanging on by a thread after a challenging year for all of us. How you can help keeping the music alive. Up next. The I-Team uncovers a deadly cancer trend right here in our area. They're not taking into account how black women present versus white. Breast cancer screening guidelines ignoring women of color. And I said a guide. Monday on News 12 at 6 o'clock. has been teaching local students to play their favorite instruments for more than 40 years now. And just like everything else, Suzuki Strings of Augusta has been struggling to stay afloat because of the pandemic. At Stradasia Water reports, they're surviving on a shoestring budget that's hanging on to its last thread. So four-year-old Amelia Lippa 
It's all about staying in tune. I do care for well, you already care for. Amelia is just one of many students who participate in Suzuki Strings of Augusta. I find a single out to song. Her mom says it's groups like this that really give kids a community. I think it would be very difficult for kids to, to become violinists or cellists or violists um, without programs like this. But after operating for more than 40 years, Gwen Jenkins, the executive director, says they're at the end of their ropes. It's, it's very scary to think that we're not sure how we can keep this thing going. The bulk of what supports our group and what supports that work that we do is membership dues. She says even though they found ways to continue lessons during the pandemic, memberships declined. And they took a hard hit financially. We haven't been able to figure out a way to fairly charge people for the group opportunities. Um, just knowing that some families would feel comfortable, some would not. There is a fear that we would not be able to sustain what we're doing. She says that's why they're asking for help to keep them above water. Seeing some community support is really important to us right now. Giving students like Amelia a place to learn, grow, and play. Tradisha Woodard on your side. Hopefully we can help them keep the music alive. Jenkins tells us they don't have a permanent space for lessons, so they rent out space, which has been difficult in the last year. And if you want to help Suzuki Strings of Augusta, we have posted a link to their GoFundMe page on our website, wrdw.com. It means a lot to a lot of kids. Master Chef Gary Player, Lady A, band member Charles Kelly of Augusta, a host of other celebrities, out along the Grand Strand. They are playing golf over there, y'all. The goal is to grow the game in the veteran and junior golf community. They were invited to follow along for the 18 holes. During the match, celebrities made donations to both communities. Mr. Player says it was a special time to be on that course for that cause. Today, a very special day to raise money for people to play the game of golf the best to get out of that one room house and come out here and be in the most beautiful place in the world of golf course. His enthusiasm is contagious, you know. If you want to donate a round of golf for a veteran or a junior golfer, you can do that on 18for18.org. The winning logos for South Carolina's annual project, Safe Neighborhood Contest, are now officially out. Students from across the state got to submit their drawings to be featured in statewide publications. This year's theme for the drawings was Stopping Gun Violence in Schools. One where was close to home. This is Jasmine Lucas's drawing from Orangeburg, but pretty creative right there. Well done. All right, if you need to watch this, it's just $11.99. No one else beats us it has been slow going eastbound on I-20 this afternoon. We're back up with our drone with these live pictures for you. We have an update on a crash. They tell us it's a crash with injuries right on the I-20 bridge at the state line, which puts it, as you know, right in the middle of that construction zone, which is just there in the middle of your screen. The lanes are all open, but traffic has been slow going, especially eastbound there. And again, we understand there were some injuries in this. Uh, there was another crash backing up traffic on the Bobby Jones Expressway. You know, that was a bad situation on Bobby Jones and Gordon Highway yesterday, but the Two far westbound lanes were closed at Wrightsboro Road. Again, we're talking the Bobby Jones Expressway now, but we've reached out to find out more about that crash as well as this one we're watching live here as we fly along I-20 toward the state line, slow going because of a wreck earlier in the construction zone right there at the Savannah River. So heads up if you're heading out there. Riley, out to weather now, and it's been another warm one.